Would you believe me if I told you that there was an island in the UK where Charles III is not the sovereign king and uh, the king is actually the pub landlord? Well, this week we're looking into this wonderful oddity on Peel Island that you can see over there. And we'll be trying to work out if this is an ancient tradition dating back to medieval times or it's no older than about 170 years being dreamt up by some drunkard Victorians in oil skins. I hope Rishi Sunak didn't see me coming across in that small boat. Welcome to the Ship Inn on Peel Island. I'm not entirely sure what Tweedy would make of it. There's no sign of any pink granite, Swedish or otherwise, or pilasters or fluting or ironic capitals. And what is that other thing he's always yammering on about? Is it lacobite, larkabite, something like that? Well, there's none of that either. I would say that we're looking at a building here that's about 300, 350 years old. There is some suspicion that it may have formerly been a ship's chandlery uh, when they were chandlering on this island, which we know they were in the 1600s. Anyhow, I'm going to go and get myself a drink and a bite to eat, and then I'll tell you all about it. And in a jarring edit cut, I've got my wrap now as well, which you get from a separate window over at the side of the pub. Uh, you, you get the general idea, you don't need to see it all, do you? That's just a quick bit of me eating. Full of uh, jarring edit cuts this week, uh, but I concluded that you don't need to see me fully devouring a cheese and onion wrap with sweet chilli jam, which is what I've got all over myself uh, here. In terms of the interior of the pub, uh, there's not very much left by way of historic features. Sound a bit like Tweedy Pubs, don't I, this week? Um, I think it was given a makeover 20 odd years or so ago, but it's perfectly pleasant. There was just one hand pump beer, uh, an Olverston brewery, but it was as blonde as P P Peter Davison's uh, hair. So I went for a Moretti instead. The earliest uh, reference we have to any pubbiness happening on the island is a lease of 1746 that was granted to an Edward Postlethwaite, and he was described as the innkeeper of the Pile of Foundry. Now, Foundry refers to the earliest known 
uh, name for the uh, island, uh, Foudry Island, which may be Old Norse deriving from uh, Fire Beacon uh, Island. Ah, chilli jam on my shirt, never mind. Uh, we then have another reference to the inn around about 1800 and an account of 1813 which uh, describes the innkeeper as a Scotch man who has been in residence for many years, supplementing his income by acting as a guide to the castle ruins. Stay tuned uh, for those. And uh, he uh, gives an account of how the sheer loneliness of uh, living here uh, on the island often drove him to the beer barrel uh, for company. And then um, we have accounts from the later 19th century of there being a series of boating uh, accidents. People were getting into regattas and uh, that sort of malarkey by that stage. And uh, the innkeeper of the ship in here on Peel Island was being chastised for supplying too much beer to people uh, that were piloting their boats. Is piloting the right term with regards to steering a boat? The only other habitation on the island today is a row of cottages just over there uh, and they are called pilot's cottages so I presume it's okay. Each new landlord of the ship inn is crowned in a ceremony which either dates back 537 years or about 170 years dependent on what you want to believe. The coronation ceremony for the King of Peel largely follows that that we're used to uh, with the uh, crowning of a new English king. And as we saw a year or so ago with uh, Charles III, there's one fundamental difference though. Uh, during the crowning of the King of Peel, they pour alcohol all over his head. And I don't seem to remember that happening with uh, Charlie, unless I miss something. In another similarity to I imagine happens in Westminster behind that mysterious screen with the Archbishop of Canterbury. The new King of Peel has to undertake to be a free drinker, smoker and lover of the female sex. Perhaps uh, unsurprisingly then, when Aaron Sanderson was crowned the new King of Peel in uh, 2022, he had to see off competition from 200 other applicants vying for the role. It's good to know in this day and age that there are so many free drinkers and smokers and lovers of the female sex uh, still around, I suppose. This ancient coronation ceremony for the King of Peel involves the uh, crowning of a really old metal helmet. Uh, there's a sword and an absolutely fantastic a uh, wooden chair which looks really ancient and that now resides uh, in the pub in between coronations I suppose and it's covered in graffiti and uh, some of that graffiti gives us an indication as to the sort of earliest dates that we know for this ceremony but more on that later. So some believe this ceremony, the King of Peel coronation, dates back to 1487 to be precise. And that links us to this place here, uh, which is Peel Castle at the end of the island. I love this word. A license to crenulate was issued for this place in 1327. The crenulating monks of Furness Abbey were gifted this location by King Stephen. He of the anarchy in the UK. Uh, they were gifted the abbey on the mainland and this island as well in 1127. Norman cronyism at its best. And it's this that became known as the Pile of Foudry. It was probably originally nothing more than a wool store where the monks, the Savanac monks, stored their wool. Um, but uh, they were really good at smuggling, by the way, those monks. Uh, they avoided the customers' men, even being involved in smuggling alcohol. You just can't imagine anyone of a religious establishment being involved with anything like that today, could you? And I really need to get a move on now, because the last ferry goes at three o'clock. 1487, a band of German mercenaries arrive here, headed up by one Colonel Martin Schwartz. And they arrived here with Lambert Simnel, and uh, it was all part of their plan to seize the crown of England for 
10-year-old Lambert. Little Lambert had been uh, crowned in Dublin and uh, then they set off for England so he could seize the crown from Henry VII. Poor old uh, Lambert's claim to the English throne was originally based upon the idea that he looked uncannily like those princes in the tower, you know, the ones that uh, mysteriously disappeared. Uh, but that didn't really hold much uh, water, so they switched. And later on, he claimed to be the Earl of Warwick, or rather the people that were looking after him claimed that. It seems more likely that uh, Lambert was the son of a joiner or an organ maker from Oxford. Anyhow, having set off from here, he was thrashed at the Battle of Stoke Field on the 16th of June, 1487. In reality, poor little Lambert was used by John de la Pole in his attempted Yorkist rebellion. But at least Henry VII showed him some mercy. He gave him a job in the royal kitchens uh, on the spit roast. Some will therefore have you believe that the King of Peel ceremony dates back to this event, Lambert Simnel. And so it is time for you to decide. Does this definitely happen? Lambert Simnel definitely came here uh, en route to uh, seize the crown of England. It's documented, we know that happened. But the first written record of the King of Peel crowning ceremony is something like about 1856. I think it's carved on that uh, chair. So there's a bit of a gap between these events. Was it to do with an attempt to seize the crown from Henry VII in the 1400s? Or was it just concocted one night by some drunken Victorians who were a bit bored? You decide. Comments down below. A quirky British anomaly or a load of Victorian balderdash? What do you reckon? Um, it is a sort of a British thing to happen, isn't it? Because an attempted uh, would-be king arrived on this island all those years ago that some uh, of the locals set up this peculiar tradition that uh, the island has its own king. But uh, it could just all be a load of old Victorian mumbo-jumbo. But it's a lovely place nonetheless, and I would recommend a visit, especially on a day like this. But I've got to get back to the ferry because I've got about 10 minutes, otherwise I'm going to be stranded on this island and I don't like it that much. There's more people waiting for the last ferry than I think it can take. made it. So uh, two ladies got left behind, but I managed to get uh, up to the front enough to get uh, on the last ferry back, so I'm okay. 